There we go. There we go. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Well, and I, uh, some of you may have seen parts of this. I did just recently update this just yesterday. And again, thank you uh, for the opportunity to um, to be asked and, and to present uh, to everyone. And again, I'm actually very humbled that there's this many people that are and agencies that found our project interesting and would like to even replicate it. Because I know starting in 2017, when uh, at at the time what what's, uh, was called Iowa Department on Aging reached out to our agency and said, hey, what do you think about applying for this grant? And it's like, eh, why not? We'll just throw it and see what happens. Well, then the rest was history. So that was, I, we are, I was just talking to one of our subcontractors. We cannot believe that we're coming on six years of this program. So it's just, it's just amazing. So without any uh, further ado, uh, just a little bit about uh, Heritage. We are an area agency on aging and we're one of six in the great state of Iowa. We currently uh, service a, a seven county uh, service region and we are a mix of urban, suburban and rural. So we have a whole quagmire of everything. We also, our agency is based in Cedar Rapids which we are the second largest metro area in the state. And we currently have, actually, this is now updated. I missed one. We are now up to, as of last week, 21 senior dining locations. Uh, we just uh, are opening um, another one. It is not officially open, but the contract is signed and everything's been approved through our, uh, our state procedures. So, and we currently have seven partner providers. So why did we decide to get into this and why were we reached uh, contact about Iowa Department on Aging? Um, way back when in 2016 and 17, we were following the national trend, just like all of you are. Uh, we were offering an outdated service delivery model. Uh, we had multiple, multiple site closures in 2012 and it progressed, um, the, the declining uh, uh, progressed. Uh, Lynn County and our region had one of the largest declines in the congregate participation in the entire country over the previous 10 years. Um, for those of you that are old enough, that's not a David Letterman top 10 list you really want to be on. So it's like we, we need to do, we needed to do something. So what did we decide to do? Uh, well, and the other issue was a lack of available services. Um, there was only one current dining location in the second, uh, our metro second largest metro area. And we did a study, we used um, data from the, uh, uh, from the, the, uh, uh, the census through some other market data through our current uh, list of consumers, working with other, uh, our other nonprofit partners. We found that we were only ser uh, serving 7% of older adults in uh, Marion, Iowa, which is one of the fastest growing uh, areas in, the, in Iowa. Our region has, um, out of the top five fastest growing uh, populations or population centers in the state, we have three out of the top five. So if this trend continues, we're, our agency is going to be uh, busy uh, for years to come. Uh, there was very little opportunity for socialization and enrichment activities for older adults. They were kind of forgotten, uh, and they had limited to no knowledge of services available through Heritage. They didn't know who we were, what was offered, um, things like that. So how do we fix this? Uh, again, we were funded through uh, the, the initial 2017 Innovation and Nutrition Grant. Again, as I mentioned, uh, we are a contracted partner with the Dep Iowa Department on Aging. Uh, and the goal was to revitalize the congregate meal program in Lynn County. We were diabetes focused, but that was, we uh, we tried some of that and it, it kind of just enveloped not just diabetes, but it just enveloped into overall healthy living. Uh, we piloted this in four dining sites. Uh, one was existing that we retrofitted, one was reopening, and two were brand new locations. 
And then a uh, there was a program evaluation conducted by the Iowa State Extension, which consisted of focus groups, uh, surveys, uh, pre and post, and halfway through, um, things of that nature. So what did we uh, what did we do? Um, we developed what's called the Encore Cafe, and the tagline still to this day is a second call to enhance your health. Um, a very big, uh, quick uh, backstory: When we were meeting as a uh, as a group, we were working with a, uh, a um, a small group of social service agencies that were focused on providing services to older adults. We all had our segment and area. We were all doing different things for different types of older adults. So we all came together and started talking. Uh, we received the grants. And I'll talk a little bit more about this, but we had a great community partner with the, the um, uh, city of uh, Marion, Iowa, and the mayor is second to none. Um, I wish sometime, uh, especially like with Carolyn, if you would happen to visit again uh, to meet you, meet uh, Mayor Nick. Um, he's uh, he's fantastic. Um, he he's a type of mayor that will challenge you. I'll never forget this. I'll even forget the day. Won't forget the day it was uh, December 21st of 2017, right before the holidays. And we had a meeting at 715 in the morning on this. And it was bitterly cold. And so we met, uh, met all met for coffee, and we said we've received this grant. We'd like to open it at Lowell Park. Uh, the library representatives were there too from the Marion Library, and we got to talking. And they said, the library said, well, why not the library? Why why not open two sites if since it's such a growing area? And Jill, my direct supervisor, and I looked at each other and responded, well, why not? Because um, I know sometimes changing in grants and working with a state unit on aging can be somewhat cumbersome. We got back, and I think I had the approval within the hour of sending it. So it just snowballed into something we never thought uh, would. Um, you hear me talk a little bit. Um, if you haven't heard me speak before, um, the uh, don't be uh, concerned if your initial project. Okay, let's see. Tim isn't on here. Okay, Wait, let me just send him a message, which is funny because we were just chatting about calls we've been on. Everybody has had internet issues across the nation, and then we thought we jinxed ourselves, and it looks like we did. Okay, stand by here. Sorry He's about that. Oh, there we go. Tim, are you there? Yeah, sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I don't know either. I That could have been our end too with the resource center's Zoom. I was just saying, we were just joking about how our internet will probably die. And here we are. I did move. <laughs> so I, I'll try not to move. <laughs> You're fine. Hey, but at least okay. it came back to where I was. So yes, yeah, so we're still recording. I just so can't we, see your your uh, screen. You can't. You can. No, we can't see that quite okay, yet. Okay, let it me... probably bounced it out. Okay, let me get back into Zoom. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, better. Yes, good to go. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, all right, sorry about that. So again, we were focusing on those that were in the gap, uh, those that had um, sufficient resources, uh, financial and social resources, and then also those that do qualify for different um, uh, government programs, uh, food assistance, SNAP benefits, things of that nature. Those that we found, a lot of them were had some uh, assets, but they did they were asset rich, rich but cash poor. We really wanted to focus on those. Uh, new service delivery model. We uh, uh, developed that model to offer the choice menu and also a salad bar at each of the pop-up locations. Uh, poured beverages, and then also tables cleared by um, our volunteers. Um, and we developed it as it's innovative and replicable. 
for those of you that haven't uh, worked with me before, you could feel free to, uh, and I'm sure Carolyn could certainly uh, share my slides, feel free to reach out to me. We will share whatever documents, templates, anything that you would like. Might take me a little bit if there, if I have to clean something off that we're currently using from identifiable data, but templates will give you whatever you would like. Um, I do have to say, and I'm put a caveat, it's like, oh, Tim, he's so smart. He's a great guy. I can't take a, a credit for some of this. For instance, the poured beverages. What uh, it all came with, you know what? I come from the restaurant industry and one of the uh, one of the largest international food contract management companies before I switched to nonprofit. And I said, well, we're going to put coffee and tea and water and everything on each of the tables. And I spent all this money putting in the pitchers and things like that. After the second week of service, the volunteers came to me and said, honey, I know what you're trying to do. You're spending way too much money on coffee. We are pouring so much down the drain. And it's like, well, we want to be able to have like the restaurant, things like that, the restaurant experience, not just lining up. Here's your tray of food. Oh, okay. It's 1145. Give me your tray. It's time to go. Um, and I said, and I don't want to see one of those back in the 1980s, those large missile coffee pots or a lot of the styrofoam, things of that nature. And they said, you know what? Let's try this. Why don't we put the, the water on there? We'll pour the coffee. And I said, are you sure you want to pour the coffee? And she said, well, you're using reusable tray or reusable plates and trays and silverware. I said, yeah. Well, you already have, we already have to go to the tables. It's not that big of a deal. It's going to save us money. Okay, let's try it. And to this day, it has stuck for going on six years. Uh, same thing when we had our grand opening event. Uh, we would put, uh, they would put water or uh, water on the tables, like with lemon, alternate it with lemon or strawberries or lime, cucumber. And to this day, we still have, um, they alternate like with lemons or, and things of that nature. It, it's amazing who was, what is still stuck. Um, okay, come on now. There we go. Uh, collaborations and partnerships, we could not be nearly as successful without this. Uh, we had our local oversight committee uh, was with uh, the Lynn County Community Services. It's a conglomeration of, of city governments, county governments. Um, uh, one of our, two of our subcontractors, um, a whole ver a couple of community volunteers to really say, well, what do you think about this? Um, just to kind of oversight, bounce things off of them, uh, having them hold me accountable, have us uh, held accountable for it. Uh, we also had Iowa State Extension come provide reports, uh, things of that nature. And actually, to this day, that committee still is in existence, even after the grant ended. Uh, we have now since switched from every two weeks to every month to now uh, every quarter, we meet four times a year um, to talk about um, issues in senior nutrition and things of that nature. City of Central City was one of our providers uh, and that was the uh, retrofit. Um, the City of Marion, we've already talked about parks and recreation um, and that's in Lowell Park. I referenced Lowell Park. That is a, a, a city owned uh, building and lodge. And also, we've talked so much, they were so really into this program, um, we were in a steering committee and they said, oh yeah, I need some information from you. I said, sure, what do you need? I said, do you have a logo and a little blurb? I go, sure. Oh, no one reached out to you. We, uh, we bought a couple of billboards and we want to go ahead and we're going to give you the billboards for three months. Just get me the information by tomorrow and we'll get them printed for you. Okay, well, how much is this going to cost us? Oh, no, we're not going to charge you. It's just our contribution. And so one thing led to another, and the billboard company loved the program so much, they actually used that, our, our billboards throughout their, their region or throughout our, our communities um, to help drive that support on the billboards they hadn't sold. They didn't want blank billboards laying around, so they would uh, put our billboard up I think at one time we had like five billboards going at one time. So it's just, it's just crazy. 
Uh, Marion Public Library, they actually started and helped uh, uh, create our reservation system. Uh, we have transitioned since then to another system, but then initially they also uh, aided in volunteer recruitment. And then also with the city of Marion, uh, they, um, free of charge, they give us our own section in their, uh, their biannual um, uh, parks and recreation um, uh, program that gets mailed out. And then uh, we are part of their newsletter, uh, their e-newsletter uh, every month. And then St. Mark's United Methodist Church, uh, someone had mentioned about a food desert that was targeted because of our uh, food desert. Uh, and it was uh, it's was surrounded by um, three subsidized senior housing complexes um, out in the uh, northwest side of Cedar Rapids, where it's really service poor. And then High V Food Stores, they became our uh, subcontractor, our our caterer. And I'll talk about some things that we uh, both sides had to learn in collaborations. Marketing. We developed um, a brand or concept of the Encore Cafe. Um, there's a, a picture of our uh, of our hats. Um, previously, we uh, in the first slide we had uh, we did insulated bags. We have aprons, t-shirts uh, to really tie it all together as a program. Um, we have decided it was it's not. There was some talk should we copyright it? We decided not to do that. Um, if someone wants to use it okay um but we really wanted to do like just build the brand uh throughout uh continuing coverage uh newspapers um especially those what we found more success is your hometown uh, newspapers unfortunately they have since ceased to uh to exist a lot of the, your smaller hometown newspapers um but they would give us their entire uh, like an entire feature um, with our monthly menu and things like that, they would charge us, I would think per month, they sent us a bill a month. I think every for every week they put it in there, they charged us $35 a month. I mean, it was not it was more money to process the invoice than it was to that we received. But then they also came to us, they gave us a full page ad. Uh, they would always come to our special events, things of that nature and also publish the menus. Uh, social media, the Marion Public Library, the Chamber of Commerce's, other partners, they would share that information. Oh, we're, how did you hear from us? Well, I sure, I sure I saw that from the Chamber of Commerce. I saw that from the uh, Marion Public Library. Uh, we are in all of the, uh, all the different uh, partners, all in their um, um, uh, a, a can, a calendar, either event calendars, upcoming of events, things of that nature. And then also word of mouth. Um, I do want to say, because you, again, goes back to, I never thought this would happen in my wildest dreams. Uh, we actually had a fair amount of money put or earmarked in the budget line item for marketing. And after the first year, we went and uh, requested um a transfer in our budget, our budget adjustment to move the marketing dollars into the meal dollars because we were having so much success. We needed more money to pay for meals because of our in-kind uh, marketing, things of that nature. And that actually continues today. But I do want to caveat, uh, there is also something called too much of a good thing. So and I, I will get to that. Health and wellness programming. Uh, because of this program, we created, we had the creation of a health and wellness coordinator and an Encore Cafe position. So back in 2017, when this started, the uh, regional nutrition program in Heritage, the division was me. Uh, and that included evidence-based programming and everything because of development and how successful it was and being a catalyst. We are now a division of uh, four. We were a division of fives, but our administrative assistant that we received for a, a year went to did too good of a job, and now she got promoted. And so that is an open position. Uh, we did a collaboration of monthly speaker series. Um, we worked with the, the county public health department. They did A1C testing for diabetes. We did that specific education for that. 
variety of different wellness speakers. Uh, we did offer matter of balance, chron uh, chronic disease self-management, falls, uh, Tai Chi. Um, I do have to say, I have to give it to our, our current health and wellness coordinator, uh, Brian. Uh, that man, I think I'm busy. He's only in the office maybe four times a, or maybe four hours a week because Tai Chi has just exploded uh, with him. He's still doing it in the uh, senior dining locations. We did offer uh, water aerobics for arthritis, um, but that individual, the first uh, coordinator we had, that pretty much ended when uh, she left. We we still are toying with uh, um, going ahead and having Brian get certified. However, Tai Chi is, once we get some more capacity, uh, we probably will be bringing that on. A couple of our sites, Central City, we like we said, it was a retrofit at highest percentage of decline in participation. It was one of our most rural sites. Um, we began to serve at uh, right around 11.45. Again, choice menu, salad bar. We did uh, start and piloted chef-led uh, cooking demonstrations. And again, we've had some great success with this grant, and we've had things that did not go well. Go well. Uh, the chef-led, we found he actually donated his time, him and his wife. But he was a very high-end um, chef where he actually worked in the Yonkers Tea Room back in the day in downtown Des Moines. And then we uh, we uh, got in contact with him through our, uh, our teaching kitchen at Kirkwood Community College. We really had a strong Hmm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Hey, Tim, can you hear us? Good. Okay, good deal. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know either. So that means I need to talk a little bit faster. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, so with Central City, we actually did end up closing the Encore Cafe at this location because there was just some internal struggles and things not related to Encore. So we did go back to that model. They went back to the uh, previous model, but they are still offering the salad bar several days a week. Uh, the Encore Cafe in Marion, again, I'll kind of breeze through some of this. Um, Lau Park was, uh, was initially closed, but it did reopen. We did implement the choice menu and salad bar. Um, Way back when it was averaging 30 participants, we're now up to 54 to 60. Um, the Marion Public Library, um, again, near three senior housing complexes, offered a choice menu and salad bar. Um, that site, the original site, for those of you that may remember in August, of, well, everything shut down for COVID. And in August of 2020, um, Iowa and specifically Cedar Rapids was hit with a derecho or inland hurricane. And that library was uh, that site and the entire library was destroyed. Um, so we just reopened January 30th of this year. We are now averaging 95 to 96 people per day on when we serve on Fridays. So it's just the, the growth in congregate, especially out in our region has absolutely exploded. Uh, St. Mark's, we are now averaging about uh, 45 to 50 consumers. Same thing with the choice menu and salad bars, near three low-income senior housing complexes, and we mentioned it being located in a food desert. Overall observations, uh, we really did work on, and I heard this a little bit in some of your comments, about changing attitudes and perceptions of the congregate meal program. We really focused on not wanting to dwell on the, well, it's a, it's just for poor people. Um, we've really um, done a great job. And I can, and I say we, um, the two Encore Cafe coordinators uh, really have done a great job making a, a welcoming atmosphere. They've done such a great job. My job has been reorged uh, about a year ago where I'm more administration. And for those of you that know me personally, I'm not, I'm still getting into used to being more at administration than in being on the program side. Uh, we did learn that participants will contribute or participate for perceived value. And that also means those that are um, uh, that might not have the financial resources to contribute. 
uh, but they're contributing their time. It's it's working right off of like the restaurant business model. If they don't appreciate the a product, if they don't care for the product or the experience, they're not going to contribute. So you could have a great menu, but if you're a server or volunteers or someone and it's not a welcoming atmosphere, um, they're not going to they're not going to come. We saw an increase in referral for non-nutrition services. Um, it's we've seen everything from SNAP benefits to caregiver to chore. Unfortunately, elder abuse. Uh, we've had several referrals from there, uh, things of that nature. Uh, also, the participants we found are always willing to uh, help with comment cards, questions, give their opinions. Again, flexibility, like I've been talking about. A range of serving time versus uh, add on a, a set time. Uh, instead of 11.30, like I said, 11.30, 11.45, we're cleaning up, ready to go. It's still flexible. Um, now, when we open at 11.30, you have the mass vast majority coming at 11.30, but there are still people that are coming at 12.15. And again, modernizing and innovating, and again, breaking uh, the mold. Um, general, again, uh, since implementation, uh, the voluntary contribution rate uh, pre-implementation was about $1.10 by the end of the grant. It uh, For these programs, it, was, uh, it has increased to $4.50, and currently we are right around $4.85. Uh, we have seen a major increase in participation uh, post-COVID. Um, honestly, and I have no problem sharing this, we saw a significant decline right before COVID, but that was before COVID was even a thing. Uh, we were looking at 12 to 15 people and it's like, what are we doing wrong? Fast forward past COVID, what it really turned out to be was we needed to make a uh, uh, some personnel changes in the, on staff. And since we opened on February 15th of 21, we have not had less than 25 people at any one of our Encore cafes. Um, it does pose some of our success. Some sites are averaging between 85 and 95 uh, people. We did inc we did open an additional Encore site in Washington County, Iowa, which is due south of us, and it's one of the most rural. And it also has the highest rate of uh, eligible older adults for SNAP benefits. We are averaging 93 people there. We do have some logistical challenges. I know sometimes when we get in a, a meeting with our fine, uh, with our fiscal team, they're saying, well, the budget, the budget. And I said, you and I are agreeing on the same thing. But if we're close to breaking fire code, we have more problems on that. We need to take care of these logistical challenges than trying to figure out how to pay for it. So there are times we have been really close to uh, uh, surpassing fire code. Uh, again, Referrals to uh, each non-nutrition uh, program uh, in our agency. Uh, we have just started doing this within the last six months, and it has been extremely successful. Once a month, we embed care team members, um, our, our social workers, monthly to each of our locations. They all pick days. Um, they have met everything from caregiver to elder abuse to homeless older adults um, across the board. Uh, mainly word of mouth. I do have to say, um, uh, since we did that transfer I talked about uh, a couple of years ago, we have not spent any dollars on marketing, and with the exception of Washington, Iowa, where we did have a small grant. Um, but I would say overall, within the last six years, I think we spent less than $5,000 on marketing. Um, it, the Encore program is now an umbrella program. We have three services under Encore, which is our cafe, um, Encore Express, which is our voucher program, and Encore Essentials, which is a con collaboration between um, our between Heritage and HACAP, our uh, food bank or food reservoir that provides uh, fresh produce to our rural uh, our rural senior dining uh, locations uh, to their participants. Uh, a couple of thoughts quick. Um, it's more than just access to food. We are not a feeding program. Uh, we're a nutrition program. Biggest benefits are socialization and access to appropriate meals and food supplies. Um, and of course, that's where we get into the nutrition piece of it. 
um, the um, uh, the nutrition guidelines, Older Americans Act requirements, things of that nature. Um, cooking for one, balanced meals. A lot of them don't want. We've had several. We've actually had a significant amount of uh, husbands who lose their wives, and they're just at a loss on how to prepare for themselves. Um, we're still dealing with that generation. They've called, uh, participants have called this a reason to get out of bed, to see people. Uh, we have uh, participants now that go to uh, all sites in the metro area with the exception of Washington, since it's um, some of them go, so like four out of the five serving days. And then also uh, empowering the participants to make better choices. We have uh, registered dietitians that come in. We just last week had cooking from one classes, how to read uh, nutrition labels, things like that. Uh, quickly, lessons learned, direction in your implementation may change frequently. Uh, be prepared for the unexpected, good versus bad. It challenged every aspect of our organization. We weren't, uh, we weren't prepared for that, whether it be on the program side, the fiscal side, contract side. Hey, we can't write the contract like we used to because this is so different and we're expecting so much from our subcontractor on this part. Uh, control, growth, and excitement kind of pull back the reins. Um, a lot of participants in the Marion site were really excited. They wanted us to open a third site. And I said, absolutely not, because we're going to uh, saturate the market and all of our participation will drop. Uh, look for collaboration in, in unconventional ways. Uh, we worked with a couple of partners where they said, you know what? My husband, he works for the Volpac that gets all the coupons in the mail. Um, and he donated uh, half of the side of one of the uh, one of the coupons in there that marketed the Encore Cafes. Um, have open mind to try new things, like I talked about the pouring of the beverages. And then also, and I learned this the hard way, take time to sit back and watch. Just take a step back, let the volunteers do or your staff um, do it and without constantly getting in the way and meaning to do well, just see, you know what, maybe I need to sit and see how this is going. Do I need to make changes? Are changes needed? Uh, no sense breaking something if it, if no sense fixing something if it's not broken. I really did kind of speed up that presentation, so I apologize. Um, here is that number, or here's my information. I did realize I did not update my telephone number because I uh, did switch extensions but we can still get their message. My new number is 3987676, um, but the email is still the same. And we talked about conventional, unconventional collaborations. Uh, that picture is Mr. Shucks with, uh, with one of our initial couples. Uh, Mr. Shucks is the mascot of our, um, our class A uh, affiliate of the um, Minnesota Twins. And they came, they delivered, they uh, they served meals, the staff served meals, the mascot came around. It was a baseball thing. It was a really great day, so. And um, Carolyn, I didn't know how you wanted to handle questions or anything like that, or yeah. that. I Tim, threw a lot of information at you and I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. No, for technical I'll difficulties. All good information. I feel like every time I chat with you, you present, I always take away good pearls of wisdom. So thank you, Tim, so much for putting this together, presenting, um, just really inspiring as well. I mean, the work you're doing, the, the lives you're touching and the work that you continue to do since the grant, you know, the true in your grant funding um, ran out. Just, just really great. Thank you so much. Um, I think at this point, Nantita, I saw your comment here about sharing the slide deck. I think that's okay. If that's all right with Tim, I'm happy to share that via right email. Ahead. Okay, perfect. And then also just wanted to say we have Irene that joined us from Delaware. Irene, if you just want to give, um, you know, a quick overview of your project as well, and then let's just open it up to q and I think, Tim, uh, does it matter to you? I think people can either put it in the chat, raise their hand, just Does take yourself make a off difference? mute. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so first we'll go to Irene, if Irene's still on the call. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm the contracted nutritionist uh, from Delaware. We're the Delaware Division of Services for Aging and Adults with Physical Disabilities. It's a mouthful. We just say DISAPID. 
And uh, thank you, Tim, so much. It was great to hear your comments and the overview because, um, yeah, we're using <laughs> using your guidance. And I love the guide that you developed. So I really appreciate that. So I'm the contract nutritionist. So Alicia Stoneberger kind of runs our, our grant for us. So I pretty much do what she tells me to do. But uh, in, in summation, uh, it's a three-year initiative um, designed using the Encore Cafe replication toolkit. We have, um, so Delaware is tiny, as we all know, um, we have three counties and our lowest county, um, lower county geographically is Sussex County. And we have a, a, a fairly high Latino um, Hispanic community there that we have just not been able to um, get to, to offer our congregate programming. So what our plan is, is, um, is to use the Encore Cafe uh, repli um, model to, um, you know, provide culturally competent, innovative, replicable services in that area. So we're really looking forward to building up um, cultural competence among our entire um, team uh, and folks down who are working with our, our congregate programming down there and to really reach that population that is underserved. So we have plans for nutrition education, uh, trying to increase the meal participation as well as physical activity using evidence-based um, uh, projects and such. So that's pretty much it. Great, thanks so much, Irene. Okay, let's jump into questions. Nandita, I see that you're kicking it off here in the chat for us, thank you. I'm just going to voice these because we are recording it. So if people are watching it back, we have the information. So you did a lot of programming. Did you have to braid funds with other grants and programs? Actually, we did not. That is uh, part of our collaboration. We were prepared to the, oh, I take that back. The only, for the most of the programming with the exception of the chef led demonstrations, we were able to have all of that in kind. Uh, we did not pay for a lot of that. Um, for instance, we use our dietitians. We use uh, hy -Vee, our, our subcontractor, but we also use them overall. We have a giant contract with them and they provide those demonstra th those presentations for no charge, even samplings. Uh, we did do the chef led demonstrations that what we did use the grant dollars for that purpose, but it just really wasn't working. It wasn't a financial decision. It was a program decision. So I would say even going to this day, we have no money for programming in our budget, but we're able to build connections. And you'd be amazed once you get out there um, and people find out you're looking for things and avenues. Sometimes we have to pair people back. At one time, I think our Encore team was saying they're two months, they're booked two months out for presentations. And what we did learn is not to do presentations or something every single service day, mm -hmm. because we started to, dil to dilute the excitement of it. Um, but even discussions were led by a registered dietitian, we're getting 25 to 30 people that are staying after the meal. So it's just, and some of them, one of it was high. They told me one was 45 to 50. I said, are you serious? Almost all of them say, said, yeah, it's the craziest thing. Hopefully that answered your question, Adita. Um, yes, yes, it did. So, so Tim, you also talked about like, you know, increasing numbers over time, right? So the mm -hmm. one thing that all the new leaf funded programs would face is um, there are requirements for data collection, right? So mm -hmm. if you are having like 80 people each day, um, what did you do for data collection? What are your data collection challenges? We did not really hear about that part at all. Um, again, it's because of the requirement and it's because mm -hmm. of- The, the data, data collection, service. and for instance, like your, your intake forms, that can be a challenge. Um, but we really were honest with older adults, with the participants saying, and we've had some people that flat out don't want to provide data. And we said, okay, you, we really do need the intake form. Some people just leave. 
but we have, I mean, I think I could count that on two hands, how many people actually walked out, just flat out refused. But then we said, well, we really need your name and age or date of birth or something. And they said, well, I don't want to be put on mailing list. And it's, they're worried about that. We're going to think of them differently. And I even said, Sir, I can barely remember to take out the trash at home. I'm not going to remember what you mark on your income range. And I said, I flipped it to this point saying, by completing this form, it is a report card on our agency making sure that we are meeting the needs of older adults, of all older adults. This also helps us increase our funding to sustain this program because Voluntary contributions are only, and I know all of you know this, but voluntary contributions are only a part of paying for this program. So the more information we have, the more data we prove that this is such a successful program and such a needed program, and we're able to potentially increase or even sustain uh, funding. Again, data drives the dollars. So we haven't had much much issue with, uh, with obtaining the needed data. I mean, you you get a few of those persnickety ones, but we haven't had many issues. Thank you. Carolyn, I see a question about uh, volunteer program development. Um, I do have to say, again, it all goes back initially with collaboration. I talked about with the Marion Library. At that time, they had they they had a volunteer um, a group of volunteers that would volunteer in there and that actually came at a great time because they had more volunteers interested than they had things for them to do so they started referring them to us and then once we started talking with our partners uh, and saying hey we really do need some help um, and I also got uh, help from uh, Mayor Nick once he uh, the mayor of Marion. And uh, he said, now you're going to need volunteers. And I said, yeah, we will need volunteers. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, however, we will work on that. And he goes, no, I'll, I'll take that. I'll find volunteers. Within a week after Christmas, um, I had like 10 volunteers. Um, and actually, we have, even through the COVID shutdown, we, out of our 12 to 15 volunteers, at least a quarter of them, have, are our ones from six years ago. They just have stayed on that long. Um, we've lost some to moving, unfortunately, some to, uh, to passing away, uh, things of that nature. But I would I would say to, and also working, I know sometimes the United Way, uh, our United Way has an area where you can go online and post um, volunteer opportunities. Um, work with different organizations or different companies. I know like a lot of give backs, what we started to do is we apply for grants, but then before we apply for the grant, we say, hey, let's build a relationship. Would you like to volunteer and things like that? And um, some of the businesses, we actually did get a grant because of their volunteer effort and we haven't used them as well, or we hadn't used them previously. Specific hints in, uh, oh, I missed one first. Um, uh, the staffing needs in the kitchen. So what I do have to say is part of our relationship with the caterer, we developed such a good relationship and I have no problem sharing this, is we provide, um, we pay $9 a meal for a choice menu, salad bar, dessert, dessert when it's menued, all the sides. And we also have a, a dedicated staff person. For, that's an employee of the grocery store. That is all they do is the Encore Cafe piece of it. Um, they deliver it. They set it up. They tear it down. They take it back to the store. Um, and in fact, up until post-COVID, we were still giving them the original $8. Then we realized, you know what? We haven't given them an increase in four years. So we probably should do that. Um, so we've been doing that. Staffing wise, I think it really is site specific on what you want your program to be and how much. Uh, the volunteers, we use, I would say 98% of the effort is volunteer driven. 
Uh, most of our staff that's there, one, maybe two, um, really work on registration and talking, uh, networking with the with the older adults, things like that. Um, the employee that we have from the grocery store, he, I don't want to say only, but he he's the one that serves it uh, and sets it up, but that's really about it. We also have a volunteer that helps dish it as well, so we can get them through the line quicker. Um, so increasing in donations, specific hints of increasing it, uh, perception is the best thing I can say. Um, being honest, saying, you know, and we really do need contributions. I know it's a fine line or slippery slope on asking for donations and you, you um, and if they can't afford it, they can't afford it, no one will be turned away. What we started this past year as a team within, I would say this past summer, and even the smallest things make huge impacts. We were having frustration with our, our contributions dropped a little bit. Um, unfortunately, we had a rash of people that weren't consumers that were feeling very entitled and they were being rather rude to the staff. They weren't making reservations, all of that. So we met as a team, a nutrition team, and we pulled in our outreach coordinator. Um, and he, uh, we purchased some of the acrylic table stands and he did blurbs like, did you know, like a did you know sir, sir, series. And he added some humor to it. Um, and they're put out at a different table every serving time. One table might have information on, did you know your contribution goes directly to provide, directly to purchase meals for this program? Uh, did you know completing your uh, consumer intake form on an annual basis helps stabilize um, and uh, continue uh, continued funding source? Um, please be kind to our staff and volunteers because the vast majority of them are volunteers. And then the other side, it said, hey, thank a volunteer. It's just simple as that, adding humor to it. Um, we did try like the whole list of FAQ, frequently asked questions. And um, this was pre-COVID and bullet points and things like that and put it on the tables. That didn't work. The simplest thing of using the humor and like the table, uh, the table holders at each of the table at the at each table has done so much. Our contributions are back up. People are happy. Uh, things like that. Hopefully, I'm being specific on questions or on my answers. Yeah, this is this is great. But if anyone has follow up questions to what you put in the chat, feel free to jump in as well. Yeah, I, I have a question, Tim. Um, I would like to know what will be like the challenges that you face through the donations, the voluntary donations. What will the the challenge that you might face um, that you can tell that it will be helpful? <laughs> what would be the challenges on yeah. getting the participant donations? Mm -hmm. um, well, I I would probably say, boy, that's a good question. I've never had that question as much as I've presented on this topic. Um, I would say the challenges would be really getting the word out to consumers, being honest, being open, but not being the sky is falling if you will, just getting it out there. Some consumers just aren't going to be able to contribute. Um, we have some that I tell people, some are can only contribute 10 cents a meal. Some contribute $10 a meal and our suggested contribution is, is $5. Uh, also on our uh, voluntary contribution signed by our box, we give the full cost per meal as I think our current rate, please don't quote me, but... Mm, I think it's over nine, I think it's close to $10 if you include staff time and labor and mileage. Um, we're just upfront on our costs and what we need, but without being like chicken little, oh my goodness, the world is ending. Well, if you don't, you know what, if you don't give me a contribute, if we don't get contribution, we're not going to have this program. Uh, we had a staff person, like I talked about uh, pre-COVID that tried that and our numbers significantly decreased. Um, 
I would say work with voluntary contributions, but also work with other potential um, fund development opportunities. Like I talked about volunteering um, with asking certain organizations or companies to volunteer, um, adopt a senior, adopt a, a meal for the day. Um, a good example would be, um, and I'll just, I have, this was a long time ago, but Walmart for a while there, uh, within four years, uh, donated close to a million dollars to the nutrition program. And then we would put out, have their volunteers come out, get their, well, they're just doing it to get their name out. Yes, yes, they are. But you're just putting your name out, their name out because they're trying to get their word out. Well, yeah, that's how business works. And then I also said, if someone writes me an unrestricted check for $60,000 for the nutrition program, I'll put your name what on whatever you want me to put your my, your name on. I mean, that's just how it works. So I would say stress, just be open and honest to your consumers, and but also let them know if you can't make a contribution for today's meal, uh, we have a lot of times where they can't contribute on today's meal, but towards the beginning of the month when they start getting their other checks or things of that nature, they make an additional uh, contribution. Uh, we get that quite frequently where towards the end of the month, it gets pretty light, but the beginning of the month, our checks come in and it just skyrockets. So it's it stabilizes. And also, sorry, another question, because uh, uh, what was the best, uh, I mean, another topic is, what was the best choice for you when you decide to have the salad bar? What do you think that it will have like a better impact like by what the consumers like versus what you invest on the salad bar? Um, that's a very good question. It is a uh, hit and miss. Um, right when you start any new program like this, it's just a shot in the dark. What I would suggest, though, is to make your lives a little bit easier, because uh, I understand some of your sites already have existing consumers. Ask your, excuse me, ask your consumers first, hey, we're looking at adding the salad bar. When you go to a salad bar, what do you think? What would you like? A lot of the times we didn't have that luxury when I implemented this, where I it was just out of the blue. Hey, I would go to um, to a buffet at the at a casino or a brunch or something, and I just steal off of of them. But ask them what would you like. Um, know that you can't please everybody. We had a big drama over sliced onions, where there's only so much space on a six or eight foot salad bar. Decides besides whatever you decide to offer. Um, there was sliced uh, onions there forever and we needed the space and we would only have two, if not three people use it every single time and it would go in the garbage. And I finally said, we're gonna pull the sliced onions because it's it's a waste in money. We needed that space. Someone, uh, there a lot of people wanted uh, sliced beets. We had a huge request for continual sliced beets. We gave the sliced beets the spot of the onions. You thought out of those three people, we said that we were closing and going to charge them $100 a meal. They were so upset. And it's like, basically, though, majority rules. We can't be everything to everybody. But I would be open and honest and give them open um, thoughts of, if we gave you, if we implemented the salad bar, what do you think you would like? Uh, what types of salad dressings? Kind of goes back to what I mentioned about managing expectations. Um, when I implemented it and saying we're going to have four to five choices of salad dressings. Well, then I was doing other things up for my job. The next thing I know, next time I walked in after I turned this over, there was like 10 different types of salad dressing. I mean, they needed a full hotel pan just to hold the salad dressing bottles. And I'm saying, whoa, whoa what are we doing here? Well, so-and-so likes this. Well, so-and-so likes that. And I said, you know, we're looking at increasing costs. If we don't need to increase costs. And then I said, the other thing is you open one bottle for one person that uses it one time, once a month, eventually you're going to have to throw that entire bottle away. So kind of managing your expectations or maybe even rotating it. Okay, we might have French uh, until that goes out and then we'll implement the, uh, oh, the tomato, tomato uh, 
basil dressing, if you will, just to kind of circle cycle things in, and also seasonality as well to add variety. Okay, thank you. Just mm -hmm. just one more because can you uh, you're you're saying about the cafe, how does it work? Can you just repeat the part because I didn't get it clear. What happened with the cafe when you were serving cafe? What was the challenge? Oh, when, when we had the reduce in uh, in participation? Mm -hmm. What that issue, and that was the one right before COVID started, we actually had a, we had a staff person that might not have been the greatest fit. And they came from a, uh, a high school and it the interview was rather embellished. And it, as it went on and on, it just, they were treating our consumers, this individual was treating our consumers like children. A, a great example would be is there was one location in the church in St. Mark's. They, um, it is kind of a tight space for the amount of people we put in there. And the volunteers would have to walk over people and things like that and put down, uh, put down silverware and things of that nature. And then I, I went in and I go, why are all these people lined up? Why are they sitting down? So this individual said, well, you know what? We need the room. So we're going to make them stand in the hallway until we're ready for them. And I go, okay, my son doesn't even do that. And he's in grade school. It's like, no, no. And so I told when we hired a replacement, uh, she's been with us for a little over a year that's over that site. And we were explaining that to her and she and she came from a, a, a high school, a high school librarian. And she said, I am all for efficiencies and people not getting in the way, but these are older adults with like walkers and things. Why are they standing in a hallway? So we have, we did change those things. It's okay, yes. The, the some of the volunteers were frustrated because they had to work around putting down silverware and things like that. We brought up the if that bothers you so much that we need to have at risk older adults standing up, maybe this isn't the volunteer position for you. And we've had actually have had to have that conversation with some volunteers. Um, and again, it's building the experience, building. I mean, if you want to go and you're waiting, you're not going to, you're not, if you want to wait for 15 minutes and you have a hard time standing to begin with, you're not going to want to go to that dining site. We actually have had, once we did a mailing, when we were reopening, we did those that were through our food distributions and things. Then we also focused on those that we haven't seen um, since COVID even started. And I want to say we brought in an additional 25 to 50 people that actually stopped going because of some of the things that were happening. And now they're some of our regular customers. Hopefully it made sense with that. And hopefully none of you have to experience that. But in hindsight, it was it was a it was a good experience for us to experience. Thank you. Great questions. Any other, um, well, let's see, we're about 2.15 Central time. We've got 15 minutes left in our meeting. Any other questions here, comments? I'm just glad we all finally had the chance to come together as a group. And um, I know I've connected everybody through email. There's been some questions floating around. So I think I connected everybody in in that regard and also um you know through our grantee gatherings I think we're of course I'll send you some information but we're planning to have more of these um just kind of coming together as replication models versus research models to just continue the the conversations that we've started this fall and Tim thank you so much for joining us today you are just a wealth of information so thank you no problem our pleasure Any other final thoughts before we close it out? I'll send the um, the recording out as well. Just wanted to make mention of that.
And again, feel free to send, ask any questions, send me emails. I might not be able to get it that day, but pretty close. I'm pretty responsive. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Nandita. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, about to close. But the one thing which kind of like is jumping on my head right now is what you talked about on the referrals coordination. So you are kind of like adding value to the program by allowing that to happen, which we all know, you know, like is a huge, huge need. So are you tracking ways through which, you know, um, are you tracking even measures across that? So how many social service agencies in your area have come together and have shared information about services mm. um, through the platform that you are offering them? We track that. I will be honest, Nandita, with the change in um, responsibilities, I know it's tracked. I don't have that off the top of my head. What I do know is since uh, COVID, we've been averaging about two to three organizations per month, like social service organizations. Um, and then that's just on, um, on site. Um, we've actually had referrals from doctor's offices for the Encore program. Um, so I can get you that data, um, but I know it's at least two to three uh, organizations uh, per month. Okay. So, so this is like somewhere where you discuss, okay, so all these other social service organizations, that is, this is how they overlap with your client mm -hmm. population. These are the services that can be, you know, like access through them mm -hmm. and, and all of that, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful thing to do, like for all these projects, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with some good. organizations that are trying to get the information out about their programs. Mm -hmm. It's it's low cost for them as well. So we have the added, we have the captive audience mm -hmm. where they can come and do their presentations and things like that. Mm -hmm. I will caution everyone on the program side. Because I got, because if you haven't told, I could be rather protective of our programs. And this is even before uh, Encore, is congregate sites are great. It's great for resources to offer presentations and things. But especially Encore or the nutrition program is not meant to be a marketplace. Mm -hmm. We are very stringent on who we accept and who we don't. For example, a, a, a statewide um, insurance company wanted to uh, come in and basically peddle their wares and things like that. And they said, well, no, I, I said, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a fit. This is not what we were really looking for. They all, then they proceeded to come in, drop off some pens and stuff. So, well, can you just pass this out for me and leave? I'm not going to market a for-profit business just because I'm a nice guy. Right. But then you go into a, several of the other organizations that are offering this new rideshare service or things like that, right. that's going to exactly. benefit our consumers. You're darn right, I'm going to do it. Shoot, I'll even buy them lunch. That's not a problem. Right. Um, so I would just be cautious, cautious, careful or cautious. Um, and especially start with your collaborations, your other community collaborations. They might not be able to give you... Uh, fun, uh, financial assistance, but they might be able to offer you resources where consumers are asking you about a certain service that your organization doesn't offer, but they can be a resource, a, a referral source. So they're actually providing a service to you and helping your consumers. Right. So there is a win-win for sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tim. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I no, no problem. I posed the question as we were wrapping up. Sorry, Carolyn, over to you. No, great, great question. Okay. Any other thoughts? I don't want to close it out unless there's, you know, in case there's a burning question out there, especially while we have Tim with us for a little bit longer. Okay. Okay, well, we'll end there.
Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Like I said, it's just nice to have everybody together. So now you know a little bit more about each other's projects, put a name with a face. I know sometimes an email is just feels like an email. So nice to all interact together. Um, Tim, thank you so much for being here with us today and giving us your time to answer questions and, and walk through the, the original Encore Cafe. Really appreciate it. So like I said, I'll plan to be in touch. I will share the presentation and this recording once we get that rolling through the Resource Center side. And always feel free to reach out. Any questions, concerns, we're always here to help. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.